What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I've got for you another breakdown video. Um, so this was round... oh god, what round is it? I want to say like round 10 or 11. I can't remember exactly which one. I'll, um, I'm sure it'll be in the title of the video. Uh, of the PDSX Supercross series. Um, the track was Atlanta 2, I want to say. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'm pretty really bad at this, aren't I? Um, but... Uh, this was an interesting race, a lot different to the last race that I've done. Um, obviously this tr this track I'm okay at, you know, I didn't feel too amazing in qualifying or the practicing leading up to this. Um, as you can see here, I get a very, very good jump off the gate, I managed to get to the first corner first, and I've just uh, got Marco just on my inside there, but I managed to get the drive on him on the landing of that first jump and actually take a lead off the start, which is so, so important in Supercross, you know. Uh, I think majority of my... Uh, wins have come from whole shots so uh, with that in the back of my mind during this race I just wanted to see if I could do uh, do more of the same really so first things first I look back over that tabletop and I see Marco I see McChicken uh, I'm pretty sure I see Hemi there and Evmoof as well so all of the uh, the heavy hitters for this uh, this series and this race were at the front from the very beginning so I knew if I wanted to win this it would be a case of really just concentrating really really hard trying to be as consistent as possible and not necessarily having the quickest laps you know I think I could afford to be like half a second to a second off the pace but as long as I was the most consistent uh, I feel like I had a really good chance and this is probably one of the harder tracks uh, on the calendar really for staying consistent uh, especially when the, the rough comes in and it gets a little bit difficult to hit the rhythms that you want um, and it's, it's also very hard to know what line is the fastest all the time because there's so many different uh, lines you can take in all these sections um, even little things like that double before the finish line, if you over jump that by maybe half a bike length, it's so easy for the bike just to rebound and crash. So you have to be very, very, very precise through the entirety of this uh, this race. Um, as far as kind of the action goes during this race, there, there wasn't too much. One thing that I did find out uh, when watching, well, by the end of the race I'd worked it out, but and when I watched the race back as well, it, um, it confirmed it for me, but uh, Hemi was actually invisible for me for this whole race. Um, I'm not sure why it causes it. I know I've I've seen uh, like screenshots and videos of other people being invisible for each other before, but uh, I don't think it's happened f uh, to me before. And you would have seen on the start. I looked to my right, and there was an empty gate to my right, which I thought was quite odd at the time. Um, but yeah, that just turns out that Hemi was uh, was lined up next to me. Thankfully, um, we didn't get together or anything like that. I watched the replay back as Dad Shoes was commentating through it, and yeah, no, no instance at all. Uh, you'll see later on in the race. There's a point where. Um, we get a little bit, like, we get close on times, you'll see at the bottom left. Uh, obviously, I have no idea where he is on the track. Um, so I was just praying that I didn't kind of run into him or anything like that. Um, I would say, probably, have a, have a look of his um, his race upload if you can as well. Um, because I think he was, as far as speed for that night, he was the uh, he was the man of the night. He was absolutely hauling. Um, he qualified about half a second faster than everybody else as well. Um, which is usually a good indicator when it comes to the races on who's going to be... Uh, going to be like danger who you need to look out for um but behind me at this point in the race i've got chicken and fmoof as far as i can tell looking from the numbers on the on the map on the left here and i'm under no illusion that chicken is faster than me around these tracks however i do believe that i have some more consistency over him on supercross um whether that's a third person slash first person thing i'm not too sure um but for that reason alone, I was uh, I was I was fairly happy to have him right behind me. And you saw there already on the map that um, he did have a like, a mistake there. Them two doubles before the sand. For some reason, I'm not sure if it's just how they're built or if it's how fast you're going and you're trying to scrub speed. Um, but for whatever reason, it's very very easy to uh, go over the handlebars. Uh, you've seen me a couple times in this race on the on the second double at least. I uh, I get a little bit a little bit wild over the handlebars. Um, but I do manage to save it. Um, off the top of my head, I don't think I actually got a, f a proper crash throughout this race uh, to the point of I had to reset my bike, sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I might have jumped off the track once um, and cased a couple of jumps here on there, but I think this probably might be the first ever race where off my own back I don't generally make like a proper, proper crash, which I was very happy with. When this race ended, uh, I was so happy with how I rode. I mean, everybody else rode so like so good as well. It was really good watching back the uh, the races on the live stream, uh, just to get an idea of what was happening behind me. Really, because when you're out front for the whole race, you uh, you don't see you don't see everything, and uh, especially at the same time where I couldn't see Hemi, um, 
I, I had no idea where he was in comparison to everyone else. Um, it turned out him and uh, Evmuth seemed to have a really good battle for the uh, majority of the race there. So um, it was a bit of a shame that I couldn't uh, quickly glance across the track and see them two going at it. It was a, it was a bit of a shame, but um, yeah, I mean, spoiler alert, I win. <laughs> a win's a win in my book. Uh, I was really happy with it. I think that makes, I want to say, four wins now since I moved to the 250 class out of, I think, seven seven races, f six or seven, um, which I'm really happy with. Um, I'll see. I really, really, really wish that I had done 250s from the beginning of the year because I think I'd be in a really good uh, chance of getting the title. Uh, I, I just seem to be riding really consistently uh, since I've, I've been doing the 250s. Um, there, if you don't know, the reason I changed from 450s to 250s is because the first four rounds or so of 450s, I just I could not get on with it. And whether it was mistakes of my own or, or getting into other people, I just found it so frustrating. Um, and when it's that late at night as well, obviously the, the 450s was maybe about between 2 and 3 a.m. for me. Um, I find it so much easier to make mistakes when you're kind of like semi, semi tired and not fully concentrating. Um, and it just, it was making me not enjoy the game. So I moved to the 250s, you know, it's a little bit earlier, uh, so I'm more awake. Uh, obviously, I'm much more experienced on the 250s than the 450s, and it's just been going really well since. So yeah, I'm a bit, uh, a bit gutted. I haven't been doing 250s from the beginning because I think, uh, although I've missed four rounds, uh, I think my average finish is the highest in the class at the moment. I know anything could have happened in them four rounds at the start of the season. I could have missed a round. Oh, obviously, I've, I've missed four rounds, but I could have uh, not qualified for a round, like gone out in the heats, for example. Um, so there's no guarantee that I'd be right up there. But um, from how I'm riding at the moment, I'm fairly uh, confident I would have been doing pretty well. Um, so for that reason as well, when the, the motocross season comes around next, I'm pretty sure I'll focus on the 250s. Um, just for one more season, at least. Uh, because I haven't done a, I don't think I've done a full motocross uh, championship yet. I'm always uh, away doing something or, or missing a race here and there. Um, so it'll be nice to see how I can do. Uh, obviously, I always like to win. I'm, I'm very, very competitive when it comes to these things. Uh, even if I get second, sometimes I've, I, I get the hump. Um, last week's, last week's race was a bit of an exception. So I came sick a second to uh, Chicken in last week's race. Um, but I was more than happy with that result. Chicken was riding amazing. So uh, you can only ask of so much for yourself. Um, but yeah, I was, I was very, very happy when I got this, and when I was watching uh, Dad Shoes live stream back, uh, he, was even, he was even a comment saying, oh, Lindsay's subscriber is going to be happy with this. Um, so I hope you, you do, obviously the, the battles are much more exciting to watch, I'm, I'm under no illusion. Um, when you're out in the lead the entire race, whilst it's fun for you in the moment, it obviously doesn't make the most amazing content. Um, that's why I'm trying to give you a bit of an, a bit of an insight to my thoughts um, as we go here. Um, you can see we're already about halfway through the time of this race, and the lead really hasn't grown much at all. You know, Evmuth has kept me so honest that he's he's very very good on this track. Um, conveniently, I did do a live stream just before uh, before this track was selected, and we did do a, a couple of races on this track, which was very very handy. Um, so I did have a tiny bit of practice beforehand. Um, but I, I wasn't feeling it at the time, so when I when I'm live streaming and trying to play at the same time, it's uh, it can always be a bit distracting. You know, trying to trying to talk and engage with people whilst you're trying to race and, and go fast. Um, so my my times there just didn't feel good, and I didn't feel like I could get a good flow going. So I was actually a bit nervous when this track was selected for the race. Um, but it, it seems to be a common theme for me is when I qualify really really well and feel really fast, the races just don't go as planned. And I don't know if that's Maybe you lose focus for a bit because you're a bit, maybe a bit too confident or what, but when I feel less confident on track or I don't feel like I'm going to do that well, I just seem to do better. I think it might be a case of, um, so I've said, so this like this corner, this jump I'm coming up to in a second, you can quad this so jump into the corner, uh, or you can go triple single, both of which are faster than going double double, but I just didn't want to risk it because I wasn't 100% comfortable with it. So even stuff like checking up there and just going double double, I think in the long run it, it does save you time because let's say just one lap I go for a triple single and it, it saves me two tenths of a second um, but next lap I go and do it and I crash and that cost me five seconds so in, in the long run you do end up saving time so and I think that's something that I've been very very good at recently as well is mentally telling myself during the race just don't bother risking it it's, it's not worth it um, and when I look back at the race you can see how like well, Evmuth and Hemi and everyone, for example, was riding, but it was just that little bit more consistency um, that managed to help me out throughout this race and get me the win. Um, even when I came up to lappers, you know, there was there was no panic at all. Uh, I just um, I chilled for a bit, 
uh, managed to see where they were going uh, and, and kind of pick the moments to pass well. Uh, the lap was really good as well. Um, the good thing about this Supercross track being longer than the others is you don't actually get to them until very late on in the race. You haven't got to deal with them much at all. Um, and I think if you're more of a... Obviously it's a pro class. If you're more of intermediate speed, like that, as I mean, you're not maybe top five in the pros. This track is probably one of the easier ones just to, to get round consistently. Uh, obviously going at a really, really fast race pace is something different. But if you was just to load this track up and you just wanted to run laps, it would probably be quite an easy track just for you to doing consistent laps without worrying about crashing every couple of corners. Um, so that's probably another reason why I think that we didn't hit too many laps this race is because the guys at the back, obviously where they can't hit the, the big, big lines, um, they're just hitting the, the consistent lines and obviously the less crashes means that we gain less time on them. Um, so you see, I think it was only until like maybe the last two or three laps until we actually started catching up with lappers and, and trying to get past them. Um, so I, I was happy with that. So you'll see at the bottom now that Hemi has moved into P2. Obviously, you can't see him on the map at all because he doesn't exist in, in, in my world, in my race. Um, but keep just keep an eye on that timer over the next few laps because it gets to a point where he's literally taking like a second out of me every lap. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I feel like if I'm going to go any faster, I'm going to crash here. How's, how's he going this fast every single lap? Um, so it was definitely playing on my mind. I, I mean, I made a couple of mistakes here and there. Um, there's one lap where I managed to like really badly case that double that I just went over and I thought that was game over. I thought I'd crash there. Somehow, Piboso must have been looking down on me, shining the light on me and uh, <laughs> I managed to save it. Um, probably, I think that's one of the downsides of me not using uh, the left-right ride lane actually is um, I end up being a passenger sometimes if it goes a bit wrong. Uh, so like, I can't force the bike back into position sometimes, just have to let it do its thing. Um, yeah, so you look at the bottom left there. I'm trying to uh, try and squint into my screen, so it's five point or oh, four point eight seconds there. Sorry, I think that says it might be slightly different. My eyes are absolutely atrocious. I'm getting too old. Um, but keep an eye on that over the next couple of laps. You'll um, you'll you'll see what I mean about Hemi starting to uh, starting to turn up the pace a little bit. And when I watched back the live stream, it didn't look like he was doing anything like majorly special. But it's just that thing of he was a little bit faster everywhere. So when you take a full one minute thirty-ish second lap into account, if you're a little bit faster everywhere. And that is really going to add up time wise at the end of the lap. And it, it, that does seem to be one of the biggest things actually is if you if someone gets a lap time and, and I say, oh, I've, I've got this, I say, oh, where, where have you gained two, three seconds from? And it's like there's no one specific area. It's just carrying that extra one or two mile an hour everywhere around the track, which really um, adds up over time. Uh, so maybe if you are stuck as far as speed goes, maybe just try getting on the power that little bit earlier, maybe break a tiny bit later, or um, something that has helped me a lot, especially in Supercross, there's quite a few flat corners in Supercross, is actually in this game, if you are very, very lightly accelerating whilst you're turning, you will actually turn tighter than if you're just uh, coasting off the throttle. Um, so that's definitely something to consider. You might be losing time on flat corners. Um, seems quite counter, uh, counterintuitive, counterintuitive, actually. If you're to accelerate, you'd expect it to try and point your bike in a straight line, but <coughs> pardon me. Um, but no, it's a little bit different in this game. Um, it's a case of I don't, I don't actually know what it is. I don't know the physics behind it, but if it, like less than half throttle, just barely touching the throttle, um, your bike will uh, will grip a bit better and you'll, you'll turn tighter. Uh, the, one very good place that that applies on this track is um, there's a flat right hander before a triple, triple, triple section, and it's very, very helpful there in, in turning really tight and getting the speed to uh, triple through the rhythm. Uh, you see at the bottom left now, Hemi's 2.9 down, so he's literally gained what a second, uh, two seconds in a lap which is, uh, is pretty gross, it's pretty disgusting. Um, and that was definitely playing on my mind at this point. I think I, I was probably getting a little bit nervous because you see, uh, I'll make tiny mistakes here and there. No, nothing major, but just maybe like framing a jump a tiny bit or, or not carrying as much speed in the corner as uh, as I usually do. Maybe straight airing things a bit more, not trying to scrub as hard as usual. Um, uh, it's, it's always good being kept on your toes in the race. So. It's, it's the pro race for a reason, you know, it's, it's not like it's just going to be a walk in the park, it's not hopping into a random public server and, uh, and winning by a minute. <laughs> um, but this is, uh, it's, this is the, it's the racing that I enjoy, and I'm, bit, I'm a bit disappointed that I can actually see Hemi in the race, because I know Hemi is a very good racer, um, like he never tries anything dirty, he will race you really, really well, like he will try and change lines if, if need be, he won't just run you off the track for no reason, um, and that is is some of the most fun racing you can have. You see, like, I, I framed it a little bit there. 
and now I'm thinking, oh god, what's, is that 2.9 seconds now going to be like one second in this lap? What's, what's going to happen? Because you see my delta, like at the top left, I'm, I'm 1.2 seconds off of my best lap of the race. Um, so I know that this is by no means like a, a flyer of a lap. Um, obviously some of you might, <laughs> some of you might think otherwise. Um, but yeah, looking at the bottom left now, so down, down, uh, down to 1.3 seconds, which is a massive, massive chunk uh, to lose in one lap, especially this late in the race. Uh, so the track's getting pretty beaten up at this point, and so I think Hemi's still probably lapping about as fast as my fastest lap. Um, so hats off to him. Um, really, really fast. I think he just made one mistake somewhere. Um, I, th I think it might have been on this lap. Um, so I'm looking down thinking, oh, if he's gaining a second a lap, that means he's going to be like right on my ass as we cross the line, or he might have even already passed me and I didn't realise because I can't see him. Um, You'll see, you'll see when I come around the, um, the finish line next time that he's, uh, he's dropped back a little bit. It turned out that he, um, he actually crashed twice at the very, very start of this lap. Um, no, nobody else's fault, uh, just crashed by himself. But when I look down and I cross the line and I see that time it has gone up by so much, I think, uh, oh, maybe I've got into him where I can't see him somewhere on the track. And I thought he was in this section because I jump and accidentally jump off the side where I over jumped that jump slightly it uh, kicked me off to the right I thought oh maybe as I've got going again I've hit him here and he's lost time that way so as soon as the race was done I just I, I put in chat like Hemi I apologize if I if I took you out I, like, I couldn't see you or anything like that um, but yeah after watching it back it was fine that there is the crash that I didn't think I would save I have no idea how the games let me survive that because I framed that so hard um, but it wasn't the end of the world, it was alright, carried on riding, obviously it's the nerves getting up a bit still because um, at this point I feel like Hemi's probably past me where I can't see the time. Um, every move's not far behind at all, every move's only six seconds back. Uh, but then I crossed the line here and I got a second of cuts as well, so the time went down. But then I saw every move's now in seconds, so I think, oh shit, I've, I've, I've taken Hemi out, what's, what's going on? Um, but then he crosses the line a little bit afterwards, so he's not miles behind. But now I've got every move to worry about because... Uh, the gap to every move went from six seconds to four seconds and it's just because of all these tiny little mistakes i'm making but thank god i still haven't had a proper crash but in my mind now i'm thinking right last lap even if i do the most cons uh, like most conservative lap of my life i don't try and go fast at all there is no way i'm losing four seconds in a lap if, if i don't crash those um and i can see lappers coming up and all of this is playing in my head thinking oh god i hope one of these doesn't get into me um, but the whole idea is to just just look ahead. You see Moto Don look behind him, uh, look behind in the air there, and saw me coming, so he moved out of the way. So shout out to Moto Don for being so nice. Um, I'm not sure who else is I'm coming up to. I think it's Sync Envy is one of them. Uh, I'm not sure who the others are, but at this point, it's also not really important that I pass these people. I could quite happily just sit behind these riders and just see it through to the finish because I don't think they're going to cost me four seconds. Uh, I even check up here, so I've been doubling uh, that section all race, but just for the, just to try and be safe and not risk maybe casing this double at the end of the section. If I get it wrong, I check up and then just go double, 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 and still things like that that you've got to think about. In you got to think of the bigger picture sometimes and not be the hero of the moment. Um, I remember watching a Ryan a Ryan Hughes DVD when I was uh, little, where he's saying uh, the cool line isn't always the fast line, <laughs> so uh, it's just it's things like that where. You, just, just think about it for a second and think what will benefit you in, in the long term and yeah, managed to get the, the win in that race which I was very happy with. Um, lap was really good, didn't give me any grief, uh, obviously I just went flag to flag, there was some moments where I thought I might have lost the lead but uh, ended up being okay um, and that, that's all there is to say about that race where you can see me here typing to, uh, typing to Hemi, uh, just hoping that I didn't take him out. Um, but yeah, that will uh, that will do it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little breakdown, and uh, I'll be doing these each week now, so you'll have loads to look forward to. Um, and that's it. If you like the video, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until I catch you guys next time, peace. Got bad shit all up in my mind right now. Fuck it, give me a minute and I'ma let it all out. I don't give a shit about an opinion, be another dimension when I wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, bitch, it's time to fill the cup. Got no fucking love. I feel so stuck. All my luck, get fucked.